I know. Ugh. All right. Wow. So this week is the last week. Not of the earth or something. <laughs> this is the last week. How will you spend it? Here. <laughs> what an awesome choice. Uh, this Wednesday is going to be a review for the final. Did you guys get my email? Yeah. And you might have gotten another email from the Mass Study Center. Did you guys get yes. one from them? Okay. So you're getting like, stop with it. I know. Uh, I just want to make sure you know that there is another option for final exam review. I uh, just gave you guys a practice final exam, so I'm going to have the answer key on Wednesday. Wednesday, we're not doing anything new. We're just going to focus on the review for the final exam. Uh, I don't think, yeah, I, well, listen to me. We definitely will not have time to get anywhere past Section 8.5. Uh, we want to focus on that today to make sure that we all understand how the hell to do that in the first place. Uh, we can do some more examples of chi-square uh, confidence intervals for standard deviations, for variances. Um, and I might talk just a little bit about the last, the chapter 11 stuff that we won't get to. Uh, if you're going into psychology or uh, well, psychology is good. education sometimes, you're gonna want those things in chapter 11. Okay, all right, maybe. So any questions from homework? I know we just barely got into it. All right, I'll get you guys later. Anybody just now coming in, you're going to want to get a final, a practice final from me eventually. Maybe not right now. So any questions from homework? No, okay. All right, let me try this. We had trouble the other day looking at this thing. Somebody help me out. Somebody help me out. Somebody help me. Uh, the very first step in any hypothesis test, the name of the test gives it away. What's the very first step? Okay, cool. Uh, okay. The first step of the first step is to figure out the claim, and then that gets fed into one of two things. H-O and H-O. Does that make sense? The first step is all about setting up your hypotheses. Since you want to know what the hell you're going to test for this hypothesis test. So like I said, in everyday English, this is what the hell you're going to talk about. The second step is Z or T. Zort. So this says, what are you allowed to use to talk about what the hell you just said you're going to talk about? Right? Sorry if I'm using really technical language. The third step. Rejection. Beautiful. Set up the rejection region. I think the book calls it the critical region. Whatever book. Why does rejection region make more sense? Because if I get in there, I will reject the the no. Good. I like it. So rejection region just makes more immediate sense to me anyway. Uh, and the fourth step. Once I've got that dude set up, the fourth step makes sense. <laughs> Yes. How far did I get? How far away do I have to get? And then how far do I get? So find Z star or T star. And then finally you, you write your conclusion. I like it. Cool. Yes, ma'am. Um, for, 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 for,
huge on that later on? At, so, the, at the beginning it is. In section A2, they have all these sections, parts of it, where they say write the conclusion. But then I think in the later problems, they actually don't reference that, I okay, think. So do, like, but you know, for me, okay. you're going to want to give practice writing the correct uh, conclusion. But what I desperately want you guys to get is uh, on this step, what is this step? How is it going to be different for chapter, section 8.5? Section 8.5 is all about hypothesis tests of a standard deviation. So what's something that's going to show up here that hasn't shown up yet? That's <laughs> chi square is going to be where? Chi square is going to take the place of this here, right? Yeah. Chi square star. No. So we're going to calculate a chi square based on our sample standard deviation. The claim is going to be about a standard deviation, so it's going to be sigma da 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 sigma da da da. Does that make sense? So it's going to be a claim about a standard deviation. So amazingly enough, the standard deviation symbol is going to show up there. What? Step two actually has got to be uh, more strict. You got to you got to make sure it's random sample. Make sure it looks normal. Make sure n is greater than is at least thirty. Greater than thirty. So just n greater than thirty is fine for us. But in general, it's a little more strict for chi square. Yes, ma'am. It, it could be just given to us that it's normal, as always. Or they could just tell us that they talked to 78 people, so we know it's greater than 30. So that's the only way you, you would have a normal distribution? Exactly. Right. Now you could plot. If anybody did section 6-6, six, six, you could actually do the, the quantile plot the, the versus the z-scores and see if it's straight or not. But Or you could, you could do a quick uh, histogram and make sure that it looks, looks normal. Right? But we're not going to get that deep into it. We're okay with just saying either they tell us it's normal or n's big enough. That's cool. Um, what's going to define the rejection region? It used to be z critical. You know, you looked that up and it defined the rejection region. Now, what's going to define it? What do you think? Based on the terms I used, maybe. What's my? Uh, what's it going to look like now? It's going to look like that with a big ass tail, right? Okay, so if I had a two-tailed test, for example, what's going to define my rejection region now? Chi square, small and chi square big. I like. It. If it was a one-tailed test, if it's greater, then it'd be chi square big. If it was a one-tailed test less, then it'd be chi square small. Right? Maybe. maybe. And and I really want you guys with me here. If I tell you alpha is I don't know, 0.10, and you have a two-tailed test. How much area is in here? 0.05. 0 .05. And we know how to use the chart. We're going to look at that again here in a second to make sure that we all know how to use it to get that. And then this guy is just going to be, well, you know, the, the way this chart's set up. What's that going to be? Yeah, 0.95, because the nice thing is these two have to add to be 1. That's a quick check you can make. All right, so let's... And then the conclusion is really the same thing as always. It's, it's, you get to the conclusion the exact same way. You calculate your chi-square and you see where it falls. Okay, so I want to run through a quick example of this. And then I have a little handout for you guys to work on. Um, and in the process, we'll make sure that we can all read this chi-square chart. Right? You're all like Z and then T and then freaking Greek. What the hell? But we'll be okay. So let's say... Um, we take a sample of, uh, what you got, Jeff? 89 grades. Let's make it 91. I think 90 is on there. 91 grades and find S equal to, you can do it, Jeff. I don't know. 6.192. Uh, test the claim. That sigma is more than uh, 5.5. .5. Right, 
me stop there for a second. All right, so we take a sample of 91 grates and we find the standard deviation is 6.192. And there's a claim out there for some reason that somebody thinks it's more than five and a half. So why does that kind of jive so far? My sample standard deviation, the reason I'm gonna do anything is because it actually is greater than 5.5. Now the whole question is, is it greater enough? Is it far enough away from 5.5 to be evidence that the whole population is bigger than 5.5? All right, maybe, maybe. So it doesn't sound, feel the same. So chapter eight, chapter nine, and then the chi-square stuff, they all have the exact same kind of setup and feel to it for the hypothesis tests. I like it. So let's see, first couple steps are easy. What's the claim? That was too loud. <laughs> My ears don't register that high. So what is it now? Sigma? Greater than 5.5. So which one's that going to be? Beautiful. Right, because the HO has to have some kind of equal sign, either an equal sign or at least a bar under a greater or less than, right? It's got to have an equal of some kind. So this guy's got to be the alternate. Then the null is going to be either equal, if you do that weird shit, or less than or equal to. Right. Can't be that weird since it's in a nationally sanctioned textbook, but oh well, it's weird enough. So if you just put equal sign there, I'm fine with that, it's fine. What do you think, Siri? No? <laughs> Siri says, whatever you want to do. Um, so this is obviously gonna be how many tail tests? One, 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 one tail. All right. So it still feels the same. So what about the second part? Z. And then in fact, in this case, it's not even going to be Z. Is chi square allowed? We're not using Z or T, we're using chi square. So all we, I'm going to make you guys tell me is, is it normal? Does it look like it's going to be normally distributed? The sampling distribution? Yes, because N is 91, which is greater than 30. Check. In the real world, you want to plot your sample, make sure it looks like it's normally distributed, or do like section 6.6 six stuff to it and make sure that it matches that pattern that it should have to be roughly normal or normal enough. Considering this, this, today's the last day to do anything new, that's fine. This is fine for us right now. Um, now, here comes the part that should be kind of new. It's the same old step. I still want to define my rejection region. What side am I going to be on of this skewed little dude here? Yeah, because I always follow what this guy says, right? My H1 always sets up my rejection region. So it says greater, it's pointing that way. So I'm gonna be, well, that was really weird. That's fine, Jess. I'm gonna be up here. Sorry, I'm a little OCD, yeah. All right, I'm a lot of OCD, yeah. Fine, Jeff, that's fine, let it go, all right. So I just gotta figure out what that is. And let me say use alpha equal to 0.05 to make it a normal alpha. So let's take a look at this chart so you can figure out how to look at it. So for you guys, I think the overhead actually works. Freedom is 90. 90. Cool. Degrees of freedom is 90. 
which column am I going to look at? Yeah, if I want uh, 0.05 in one tail, that's beautiful, especially because it's up here. I look at 0.05. That's the amount that's to the right of it. That's awesome. I like it. Now you see the extra evilness of this chart is not only is it one more freaking chart, it's also set up completely differently than the other charts. We all got together and we said, yes, it sounds good. <coughs> I have no idea why I'm saying it. Um, so I want to look at 0.05 and degrees of freedom of 90. Freedom. There you go, 113.145. That kicks ass. I like that. You guys agree with me? Do you concur? Do I concur? 113.145. So the weird thing about this, and hopefully everyone understands this, the smallest chi-squared could possibly be is what? What's the smallest chi-squared could be? Remember that the formula for chi-squared that's what I'm going to use in step four, right? That's like the equivalent of Z star. Step four is find the test statistic is Z star, T star, or chi-squared. One of those things. This is the formula I'm going to use. So the smallest it could possibly be is, because the smallest that squared could be is zero. zero. Right? Now, if the variance of my population was zero, I'm not going to do a damn thing with it. Is there any way it could be normal if the variance is zero? What would it look like? If the variance is zero and I plotted all my data values, what would that look like? A straight freaking line. Any way you can make that normal? No. So I wouldn't do anything with it. You with me? Just in case somebody goes, well, what if that's zero? It's infinity. No, screw that. It's not going to happen. I wouldn't use this. You with me? The minute it's not zero, this is applicable. It could actually be made normal if it took a sample size big enough. We know that. The, the, the sampling distribution. All right, cool. I like it. So that's the weirdness about this. That's why this sounds so crazy. We're used to getting stuff like maybe 2.575, stuff like that. This sounds a little crazy because it's also based on squares of things, right? It's going to be larger than we used to. So how do I say this in words? Chi square is bigger than 113.145. What do we do? Reject the null. Support the I. See, it's the same damn thing. It's the same exact thing. I'm using a different table. I'm using a different formula. But I'm using them for the same exact reason. So if chi-square will reject the hoe, good job, support the high, right? I like it. And now we can do, now we know what far enough away is, let's see how far away we got. I have this feeling we didn't make it far enough away, that's all right. We're fine. So step four. Sample information. And this seems like I don't have enough information, but all you really need is uh, N and S. Well, here's the formula. Where am I going to get sigma from? What the hell? Sigma coming from? Do you, what's N? 91. What's S? 6.192. Sigma is? Be careful. I mean, that's not a magic formula. It doesn't make S become sigma or something, or the other way around. Where do I always get what I'm comparing my data value to? I always get it from here. I'm assuming this is true. Okay, assuming sigma could be equal to 5. Okay, so sigma is 5.5. Which is one reason why the book makes that an equal sign always, but it's still not technically right. But that's the value I'm going to use. What am I comparing my sample to? 5.5, that's the claim, right? I want to see how far away from 5.5 did it get. Did it get far enough? So I know that that's going to be 5. Okay. And you should be used to this. You always get that other value, that your sample minus the mean. Where do you get that from? The claim. 
P, where are you getting it from? The claim, always. So what does this come out to be? So this will be 90 times divided by 5.5 squared. What do you get? 114. No way! I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That was a little extreme reaction. But you understand how every number I just put up here, except for the ones we looked up and made from a formula or looked up in a table, was completely, totally made up for me right now? And we got, do you understand why? What is it now? Be careful. What is it? 114.07. And we're comparing that to what? Holy shit to have. It's like I, yeah, so let me guys are like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? He's always doing shit. I have no idea what his deal is. But do you guys understand what just happened? Yeah. It's like I made that happen, but I can't take credit for it. I should have been like, well, yeah, I worked it all up my head ahead of time, and, uh, you know, it's nothing big. But no, I didn't. Where did I lost my So we got to 114. So we're there. Holy shit. So did what did we just do? Did we find evidence or not? Yes. Totally. Barely. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, reject the null. Support the high. And of course, now you go. Now we know that just because 114 was more than 113 point blah blah, right? That's why we know that. I can immediately write that on this step. So if you write that on the next step, I'm treating it as if the next step hasn't happened. You're going to lose all the points because that's not enough for the next step. The next step is now use what you found to write something about the claim. Which one was our claim? Yeah, the claim was the high, right? So I want to use this language. Do you see how that works? There's still a lot of us that don't quite see how that works, but that's all there is to it. How do you know to use the word reject or support? That was my claim, so I use this language. The language that goes along with my claim. There's never any ambiguity. You don't just take a guess. You got a 50-50 chance. But it's not going to work out in your favor over the long run, believe it or not. So we have found sufficient evidence to support the claim that Good sigma for grades. I didn't really get any more details, so that's all I got to say. Sigma for grades is more than 5.5. That's fine. Cool. You can even use English if you don't want to be using math -ish. I'm still kind of excited about the 114, 113. That's just weird. What is that? I can't win any money with that. It's not getting the lottery right, but still, it's kind of neat. So, here's what I want you to do, and if you need to, uh, yeah. you, want to. you can come up and reference these if you don't have one, if you don't, you're not sitting near somebody that has one, you got a few of these, here's what I want you to do. You're going to be so excited. You don't get this one, this is mine, all nice in color. It's too bad. And with the answers. <laughs> By the way, this is all section 85. Are you with me? The hypothesis test for standard deviations.